We're going to practice our loops. Um, let's write a little program that asks the user for some numbers and adds them up and then returns the sum of those numbers to the user. Uh, the thing is, we want the user to be able to enter any number of numbers. Um, so how would we do that? Well, we're going to need a loop. Uh, also, we're going to need input from the user. So let's start with that. I'm going to say scanners. Keyboard is news. Scanner. System. System. Dot in. And you uh, can come here. Import scanner. And now I'm going to need to ask the user, I'll tell the user what he has to do. So enter the numbers. Uh, and how do I know when the user is done? Well, let's just say he's going to have to enter the number 0 to end. So enter the numbers you want added and then uh, enter the number zero to n let's just run that uh, oops there's a period there okay uh, that looks nice so now i want the user to enter the numbers one after the other um so I'm going to need a loop. Like, so let's, I don't know how long that loop is going to go for. So for now, I'm just going to have an infinite loop here. So while true, this is uh, an infinite loop. So we're going to have to break out of it. So we're going to have to use the break statement. And basically, I'm going to break if the user enters the number zero. Right? So I'm going to declare int number is and then I have to read that from the user. So keyboard dot the next on um, the next integer. So you know I'm gonna assume the user types only integers. So I got the number, then I need to add it to the sum. That's what I have to do. So int sum equals uh sum plus number. Well, that's not going to work, you know, because I got sum here and sum there. I need to declare the sum first, and then sum plus equal number. And so it tells me that it has might not have been initialized, right? So we want to initialize it to zero. Uh, and then, you know, hopefully you see the problem here we're going to have. So what's going to happen is first time we go through, we're going to read a number. I'm going to set the sum to zero. And then I'm going to add the number to, to the sum. Then I go through the next time. I'm going to again set sum to zero. So I don't want to be setting sum to zero every time, right? I want I want the sum to be constant, uh, to not be reset every time the user enters a new number. Right, so what I want to do is I don't want that there, I want that over here outside the loop. I want the sum suit to be set to zero outside the loop, then within the loop, we just add to the sum, add to the sum, add to the sum, and then after the loop, um, that is when we print out sum is and sum. And uh, it still means unreachable code, because it is. We have an infinite loop here, and this code is never going to be reached. So remember, we have to fix that. Um, so when do we want to break? Well, we want to break if the number is 0. Then I want to break. Break out of here. Let's see if this works. This is enters the numbers you want to add, enter the number zero to end, so I'm gonna enter one, two, three, zero, the sum is six. That worked. Let's try it again. Let's say we just enter a zero, 
There's only zero. Okay, that's good. Uh, and then let's say we enter 55, 64, 66, 77, 88, 99, 0. And uh, I think that's okay. I think that's correct. So that's how you do this. Now, another way you might do this because we have this while true. So uh, another common solution to this. A way to move this around is to have a boolean flag. So done. Uh, we say user boolean user is done, and set that to false initially. And instead of saying while true, we we'll say while um, while not user is done. So while the user is not done, as long as the user is not done, uh, we keep going. Uh, and then I can change that. If the number is zero, then I can uh, set uh, user is done is true. Right. So this, this is either flag or also called a sentinel value. Um, so it's another nice way, and you know, in this example, it's very we have very little code. But if you had a lot more code using this variable here, uh, makes more sense. Uh, and uh, the other reason you might use it is you notice that now that I've done this, when the user types zero, the user types zero, I set this variable to true, and then I do do this part. So I will run this sum. So it's going to add zero to the sum. So the sum is not going to change. The program is still going to work, um, but there might be cases where you need you don't want to break as such. You want to you still want to run all the code, but you want the loop to exit when you get back up here, and that's when you use that kind of boolean. So just to make sure this runs, I'm going to run it again. One, two, three, zero, and the sum is six. So again, that runs just fine. And this is just another way of structuring that.